Hi there, baby birds. I'm the Punk Patriot, and I'm taking a break from thinking to collect and regurgitate the news half digested into your mouth. So as not to provide further distraction for the rest of this video, I have a zit right here. As a follow-up to my previous expose on the religious leanings of the Pope, we have this follow-up report. Is the GOP racist? Operatives within the GOP have released publicly doctored photos of the White House depicting a watermelon patch on the front lawn, produced the song Barack the Magic Negro, and also a doctored photo of Barack Obama with everything blacked out but the eyes. Also, there was Fox News anchor John Gibson saying that we need more white babies, and yet, for some reason, the GOP has developed a reputation as being racist. Thankfully, the GOP has Audra Shea, vice chair of the Young Republicans. Realizing the GOP, in order to remain competitive, needs to get on that series of tubes that all the kiddies are on, Ms. Shea began doing Web 2.0 outreach via social networking sites such as MySpace, Facebook, and Twitter. Controversy arose when one of her Facebook friends, Eric, commented on her wall, Obama bin Laden is a terrorist. Muslim is on their side. Need to take this country back from all these mad coons and illegals. I'm sorry, did I say typed? Wow, I did not realize that people who were that socially retarded could figure out how to use a computer. But don't worry, it gets better. And by better, I mean worse. Ms. Shea responded eight minutes later, you tell him, Eric. L-O-L. But it turns out, not everybody in the GOP are racist, backwater KKK members. Some of her young Republican friends began complaining on her wall. Miss Shea later offered the insight that she was responding to something else that Eric had said previously, and hadn't read Eric's comment in full. To demonstrate this, she did the politically smart thing and removed all of the dissenters from her friends list, preferring instead to keep her crazy racist friend Eric. As news of this incident grew, Miche suddenly realized that she was in political quicksand and did what any intelligent person would do upon realizing they were in quicksand. She began thrashing about wildly. Debate flared, but eventually her friend Eric came back to save the day. This is still America. Freedom of speech and thought is still allowed, for now anyways. And the last time I checked, I was a good old Southern boy. And if you're ass is black, don't let the sun set on it in a souther town. Good luck, Audrey Shea, and best of luck with your aspirations to become the chair of the Young Republicans. I'm sure you'll do fine. Wall Street! Despite the fact that everything in the United States is going to financial hell, Goldman Sachs somehow managed to exceed its earnings expectations. No surprise here, they engineered the security bubble and the housing bubble, and people from their company, who are currently in our government, engineered the bailout, making sure that the lion's share would go to Surprise. Goldman Sachs. Enjoy our tax dollars, Goldman Sachs. I'm sure we would have. More Wall Street news. Morgan Stanley is preparing a new and innovative financial product. The terms of the agreement are incorporated under the laws of the Cayman Islands. What could possibly go wrong? Here's how their new highly profitable scheme works. They're taking business loans and bundling them. Then they're taking these bundles and then dividing them into debt-backed securities, then dicing these into pieces and selling these as derivatives. These derivatives, despite having toxic assets in them, are still AAA rated. To which you may say, uh, you might stop me here and say, wait a minute, that sounds an awful lot like what they did last time. And you'd be wrong. It's exactly what they did last time. So yeah, speaking about all of that toxic asset blended AAA rated stuff, we've got it all behind us, right? Congress held hearings and stuff. Ah, uh, well, they didn't pass any laws, so it's still legal. So no. Thanks, Congress, for doing absolutely nothing. Okay, okay, to be fair, they didn't do nothing. They did hold hearings, and they also gave away billions of our tax dollars without conditions attached. Boy, it sure is a good thing we've had a democratically controlled Congress since 2006. Getting rid of all those Republicans, that changed everything. Greenwashing. Brewers in Germany have developed a way to harness the power of the spent grain used in the brewing process to run burners and boil water. These brewers are now touting the beer that they make as green beer because they were able to recapture 50% of the energy that they normally would use. Break out your mugs. Beer's now good for the environment, right? Uh, no. It's not good for the environment. It's just less bad. Even if you're recovering 50% of the energy that was wasted, you're still using that other 50%. 
and that has to come from somewhere. Plus you have to think about all the chemically intensive monoculture that was used in creating the grains in the first place and how that affects the water table and the biosphere, particularly if there are any biologically persistent chemicals used that might get stored in body fat and then bioaccumulate. Sorry to break up the party, beer's still not good for the environment. It would have to have a zero net impact or a negative carbon footprint for it to make the earth healthier with every mug. Keep at it, Germany. Corporate douchebaggery. ExxonMobil is in trouble for sabotaging their own oil field by filling these wells with trash, toxic sludge, cement, and undetonated explosives. Exxon had had a deal where they were essentially renting the land from the family that owned it previously. When relations between Exxon and this family went sour, Exxon sabotaged the wells to make sure that no one else could ever drill from them. When the family went to redrill the wells, their drilling equipment came in contact with the garbage and cement and detonated the explosives leading to a massive underground oil fire. Well played, Exxon. That corporate douchebaggery at its finest. To clean up this mess, Exxon has been hit by the state of Texas with a $1 billion fine. A billion dollars? Uh, Texas? I don't know if you know this or not. Exxon does $45.2 billion profits every year. That's net, not gross. A billion dollars to them ain't shit. Besides that, they're probably just gonna go to court and negotiate it down to a few million anyway. Nominal things Obama is doing to make things suck slightly less. Obama says that he is going to do away with the color-coded terror alert system. I guess that's cool. After being set on, OH SHIT, WE'RE ALL GONNA DIE! For the past six years, I don't think anybody was paying attention to it anymore anyway. Walmart, in other news, Walmart supports being forced to buy private health insurance for all its employees. Sure, they won't provide insurance to their employees now, but if we force everybody to, they'd be glad. Why? Because Walmart deals with economies of scale. They buy incredible amounts of volume all at once, and they're able to use this volume to negotiate down the unit price. If you're the person who's in charge of buying insurance policies for every person employed by the nation's largest private sector employer, sad, isn't it? You can use your employees and the sheer volume of them as collateral and negotiate the prices down with the insurer because of the sheer volume. It's already impossible for small businesses to compete with Walmart on prices for the same reason. With every company being forced to provide health insurance for all of its employees, Walmart would be able to negotiate the prices for individual policies down further than its competing box stores. Walmart is our all-powerful and glorious leader. Walmart is our all-powerful and glorious leader. And that is everything that matters. Be sure to visit my blog at punkpatriot.blogspot.com. Be sure to check out the store for stuff you can buy. punkpatriot.etsy.com